What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of San Diego Prep Insider. It is officially high school football playoff times, and that means that Raymond Brown, who's joining us every week anyway because he's San Diego Football Network and he covers the best high school, college, pro football all across San Diego, <laughs> means he's here to uh, tell us dark horses. He's here to tell us road doggies. He's here to tell us upset alerts. He's here to tell us he's, he's got so much information in that brain. He has to stretch out his headphones a little bit to get a little bit more room in there. We're going to talk about all of the divisions going from five double a through to open. So if you're looking for your matchup, skip ahead appropriately that we'll do a couple minutes per bracket. We'll try and keep this nice and concise for everybody knowing that we got a lot of football to get to, and you want to listen to your games. So Bra Raymond, Thank you again, as always, for joining us. If you don't mind, let's jump straight into it. The five AA playoffs, Holtville and Army-Navy Academy each get a bye. The other two games, Rock Academy, Maranatha, Calipatria, Tri-City Christian. Tell me your thoughts on this bracket. Um, very good bracket. Um, I like the Rock Academy, man. They got a running back, uh, Donald Moore the third. He is just uh, killing it right now. I believe he's like the top uh, kick returner in the country or something like that. Uh, as far as like kick return yards. So uh, I'm going to be looking forward to that matchup against a, a good Maranatha Christian team who um, they're kind of rebuilding this year. They're kind of on like a bounce back season, but um, that should be a good game. And uh, also the uh, Cal the Calipatria and uh, Tri-City Christian game should be interesting too. Um, I know Tri-City Christian is the heavy favorite there, but uh, watch out for Cali. On to Division 5 as I pull up my brackets here. 1 through 8, so the Division 5 playoffs look a little bit different this year because of Division 5 AA sort of splitting it into two groups. So nobody gets buys in this one, just eight seeds here. Vincent Memorial, the one, they'll take on number 8, Valhalla. Hoover, the number 4, takes on number 5, Monta Vista. El Cajon Valley, the 3, <laughs> plays hosts to Kearney. And then Sweetwater, the number 2, plays host to Southwest El Centro. Raymond, I'm curious what game you are looking at most in this first round. And these are some great matchups right here. But, um, that Kearney and El Cajon uh, Valley game looks pretty good. Uh, Kearney's been having an amazing year, uh, especially Brody Stump, the quarterback. He's been putting up some outstanding numbers. But uh, El Cajon Valley has had one of the best bounce back seasons I've probably seen this year. Um, all their playmakers are playing great. Paris Dixon's uh, making great plays right now. Uh, their quarterback, Tamara, is uh, balling under the radar. So, um, yeah, that, that's going to be a fun game right there. Uh, two teams on the up, uh, El Cajon Valley. Uh, they, they, they look like the favorite, but I would watch out for Kearney. Okay, I like it. Let's talk about then. Vincent Memorial, the one, Valhalla, the eight. Love to see that Valhalla's second year under Wayne Cherry in the playoffs and is confident in this game. But the number one, Vincent Memorial, seems like they are most likely the favorites in this game, yes? Yes, but watch out for Valhalla, man. They got a great team. Um, their run game is ran by uh, Dominic Silva. He's one of the top uh, running backs in the county as far as the numbers go. They they got uh, playmakers all around. They just uh, have trouble uh, they just had trouble winning, just uh, finishing games and uh, putting a uh, full game together. So uh, if, I don't know if they play to their potential. I think we could be seeing an upset right here. But cool. um, this is Memorial's ball at two. Uh, their uh, quarterback, Jacobo Elias, he's putting up great numbers. So it, this should be a great game. But I'm, I'm on upset alert. Hoover, the four, Monta Vista, the five. You were big on Monta Vista down the end of the season as a team that was starting to get it together. Hoover, we've talked about them plenty every single week. That Sir Autry is an amazing rusher. Kristen Noriega is a great quarterback. This seems like another game where it could be really close. It's the four versus the five, but leaning toward because it's at Hoover, Hoover's going to still be the favorite, yes? Uh, it's looking like it. If uh, Monta Vista could control the ground game today, they're they're uh, they're a run first team, so they got to control that clock, get that big three off the field, man. Um, it's like you said, Sir Darius Adres is having an amazing year, possibly a player of the year contender. Um, Kristen Noriega's um, been one of the best quarterbacks in the county, but now he got some weapons and uh, Xavier Williams. So um. If that big three go off, man, they're going to put up a lot of numbers, and Monta Vista is going to be hard for them to catch up. So if Monta Vista can get that run game going and control the clock, they might have a chance. Last uh, game in that bracket. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, uh, I got Hoover in this one. 
Last game in that bracket, the number two Sweetwater. I'm really curious about this one because they are a sub 500 team, but their wins were all real, like quality wins against strong opponents. So the two seed, but sub 500 is always going to get a lot of attention. I'm curious your thoughts, Sweetwater versus Southwest El Centro. Yeah, South, I mean, uh, Sweetwater is another uh, team that runs the ball very well. Uh, Xavier Cruz, they got like two or three backs that can put up 100 yards on any game. So um, if I'm Southwest El Centro, I'll watch out for that. Um, honestly, I don't know much about South uh, West El Centro, but um, I think I think they're going to put up a great fight, but I got Sweetwater winning this one. Their run game is, is way too powerful. I think they're moving on to the next round. Move on to Division Four. Mount Miguel, Santana, Westview, and Chula Vista all have buys. So nothing really to talk about this round other than just, hey, congrats on those teams getting a week off to rest, recover, and start game prepping. Let's talk about the teams that have games this week. The number eight Calexico team is hosting number nine Escondido. I sort of labeled this one as Escondido playing with house money. Uh, Crawford, number five, is going to be playing Orange Glen. Benita Vista, the six, is going to be playing Coronado. Um, Escondido Charter, the 10, is going to Olympian. Out of those first-round games, who are you most interested in? Orange Glenn matchup. Um, Crawford is uh, playing uh, pretty good in uh, league play. They got an upset win over um, Mission Bay. They played really great in a shootout against uh, Hoover. I love their run game with uh, Joseph Mancello running the rock. But um, Orange Glenn and the team, uh, they struggled earlier in the year, but uh, they just got things to get them during a league play. They're going to be at home since they won the league. Looking then at the rest of that bracket, um, Calexico, Escondido, who you got? I like, I like the way Escondido's been uh, playing. Um, I'll go with them. These are having a, a kind of a roller coaster type of year. They're going to get to that. Vita Vista Coronado, who you got? That's going to be a tough game. Uh, I don't even start in league. Uh, I like the way Kata, uh, Ada Tannehill's been playing. So, um, and they, they got a great team uh, for shut down corners. I'm going to go with Bonita Vista, but Coronado, you know they're going to play tough, man. Coach Hines is a great coach. He can motivate probably anybody. So uh, I, would, I would be careful. That's an upset alert. Uh, I got Bonita Vista. Olympian playing host to Escondido Charter, last game in this division bracket. Who you got? And um, Escondido Charter, uh, I love the way Patterson is running the ball. All right, let's move on then to Division Three, Mission Bay, Grossmont, West Hills, Fallbrook, all on to the next round already. They get buys, so congratulations. Always got to shout those teams out, but let's talk about the first round games. Patrick Henry, the eight, hosts El Cap, the number nine. San Diego is going to be taking on SFC. That's the 12-5 game. La Jolla Country Day, the number six, is going to play host to Morse. And then number seven, Imperial, is going to play host to Valley Center. Raymond, out of all those first-round games, which one are you most interested in? Hmm. Um, I love the Patrick Henry El Capitan game. I think these uh, two teams are pretty evenly matched. Uh, Patrick Henry, uh, they're a pretty decent team, man. Uh, they took Mission Bay all the way to uh, – overtimes in a uh, mission base and number one seed. So from Patrick Henry, I'm heavily confident going into this tournament and um, El Capitan they're They're a pretty good team. They're getting it together. I love their uh, passing game. With Barker and uh, Lachop. Uh, Jonathan Biffo, he's coming on. That's a big target for El Cap right now too. But um, yeah, I got Patrick Henry with a slight advantage. San Diego SFC. Tell me who you got there. My cavers, man. Um, yeah, San Diego High. Uh, I don't know how they will match up against uh, SFC, but um, man, to start off 0 and 6 and then come back and win your league, uh, that's amazing. It takes a lot of resilience. Uh, man, uh, uh, I want to see them go to the next round. I want to say they they got this one. They're at home too. Uh, I'll say I'll take San Diego with the upset. Uh, La Jolla Country Day playing host to Morse Country Day. Oh, he's pretty good at home. Your thoughts here. <laughs> 
Yeah, Mancini is uh, balling this year. Um, I also like Superior Gardner at uh, Morris. But uh, I, I see La Jolla Country Day winning this one. Last game is Imperial playing host of Valley Center. Congratulations to Valley Center on being another one of those schools that first year's head coaches are succeeding at. Um, into the play, making a uh, berth into the playoffs. Who you got in this one? Uh, that, that was a gutsy win over Oceanside to force the three-way tie. Well, off that alone, I'm going to go at Valley Center. I think that game right there is going to give them hefty confidence going into this one. All right, let's move on to Division Two. And uh, as you say the words heavy confidence, I have heavy confidence that this division is going to be an absolute bloodbath. No matter who comes out on top, will be a true tested champion. Del Norte, Scripps, La Jolla, Rancho, Bernardo, all moving on to the next round. Obviously, Raymond, that leaves me happy because my Vikings are going to at least get a good shot at um, making a deep playoff run here. First round games, number eight, Oceanside is going to take on number nine, Steel Canyon. The narrative in this entire bracket, like I said, is just good football, but it's also first-year head coaches making an impact. Oceanside, Rancho Bernardo, Del Norte, all first-year head coaches, all back in the playoffs now. Uh, the number five, Point Loma, will take on number 12, San Pasqual. Number six, Central Union plays host to number 11, East Lake, And number seven, Bishops plays host to number 10, Brawley. Raymond, what game out of this first round are you most interested in? Uh, definitely Oceanside, Steel Canyon. Um, a great bounce back there for Oceanside after going winless, even though they had a tough loss last week to Valley Center. A uh, big upset there. Uh, I think they turn it around. Uh, Steel Canyon has been amazing, especially Jonathan Sublime, uh, one of the leading rushers in the East County, probably one of the top rushers in the entire county right now. They're running the ball great. They've been playing great uh, during the second half of the regular season. But uh, I'm going to go with Oceanside. They're at home. I know they're disappointed. They let one go to Valley Center. Uh, I think they bounce back and uh, move on to the next round. Oceanside winning a home playoff game feels <laughs> like this is the division system working right. It gets you down to where you need to be for relative talent to get to winning again. And look at that. They're taking the opportunity. They're not sliding further. They're winning. They're starting to go back up. Number five, Point Loma. Number 12, Sam Pasqual. Your thoughts? Man, two great teams, man. Uh, San Pasquale, I love the way they've been playing, uh, even as underdogs. They've been uh, putting up a great fight. But uh, Brady Allen's been doing everything for Point Loma, passing, rushing, receiving, defense. Uh, he, that kid's a Swiss Army knife. Be a great team. I'm on the on a, on a edge. Edge Tampa squad, but Tampa squad gonna put up a great fight. Number six Central Union, number eleven East Lake. Your thoughts out here? Uh, yeah, uh, great win for Central in the Getting it together, second half of the season. Prada is just amazing on both sides. And uh, DB. I'm always it's just tough to play on uh, Imperial. Uh, move on and play your Vikings. Seven uh, Bishops is playing 10 Brawley. Your thoughts here? Another great game. Uh, uh, Cash Herrera is having a great year. Uh, I got Bishops moving on. Cash Herrera certainly seems to have matured in real time, uh, starting with that Mount Miguel win for Bishops. On to Division One: Torrey Pines, LCC, El Camino, and Mission Hills all get first-round buys. Congratulations to all of them for uh, surviving the adventure that always is being a Division One team in San Diego. It's a hell of a place. It's a hard thing to win a high school football game. Talking about the games, though, that are going to happen in this first round, number eight, Modern Day, plays number nine, Madison. Number five, Saints, plays number 12, Mira Mesa. Number six, Cathedral Catholic, plays host number 11, Ramona. And then number seven, San Marcos, is going to play number 10, Poway. What game out of this first round are you most interested in? I like the uh, Modern Day Madison game. Um, these are two teams that uh, was expected to do big things this year. Both teams were expected to be open division contenders. Uh, fell on hard times, uh, sort of need to bounce back and get some respect. Uh, Modern Day has been doing a great job at that, earning some respect. They got a great win over St. Augustine. They went on to win their league title once again. I think Modern Day, uh, I think this is going to be like a thriller. I think Modern Day is going to pull it off. 
So I got modern day moving on to the next round. Saints and Mir Mesa, number five. Saints, number 12. Mir Mesa, your thoughts? Uh, as much as I love Mir Mesa, the way they've been playing, Tyson Line is uh, slinging the rock pretty well. Chris Brown's making plays. He's a play waiting to happen. But I'm going to go with uh, Saints. Uh, I love their uh, rush attack. Uh, Brady Palmer's playing great. Uh, I'm going to go with Saints moving on to the next round. It's not particularly disrespect at this point in the playoffs. Um, you, you you can still be a good team, and we congratulate you on being a good team, but you're just not the best team in your division. Next game that we've got is number six, Cathedral Catholic, number 11, Ramona. Cathedral all year long has been pleading and crying and screaming. Now, I, I don't know if there's the right adjectives, but they've been espousing that strength of schedule is their play. They are the toughest strength of schedule, so their losses don't mean the same as everybody else's losses. So I'm curious, do you think that that's going to translate? Are they about to go on a playoff run, starting with a win against Ramona? Uh, it better translate, or are they going home? Um, but no, nah, um, I got them... I got them beating Ramona. Ramona is a great team. I think one of their best players is out for the year or something like that. So that's going to be a tough one for them. But uh, yeah, I got Cathedral uh, winning this one. They're they're one of the top teams in Division One. Just their record doesn't really uh, doesn't really express that too well. But uh, I got uh, Cathedral moving on. Last game in Division One is number seven San Marcos playing host to number ten Poway. Yeah, uh, San Marcos was uh, looking amazing. Uh, congratulations on their league title. Uh, Creek McAhelly, Jason Nix, one of the best combinations in the county. I got them moving on. Moving on ourselves to open division, Lincoln versus Helix, Granite versus Carlsbad. Those are the two games. Let's start with Lincoln Helix. Uh, that's going to be a fun one, man. Uh, uh, it's hard to go against Lincoln. Even though um, Helix got some big players, got some big-time playmakers on their team, uh, Kevin Allen, uh, player of the year contender, I think he's going to have a great game. But I think Lincoln just got too much talent, too much depth, and uh, just too much explosiveness. Uh, Helix, I think they move on back to the Open Division Championship. Carlsbad versus Granite Hills in a um, a matchup that we we don't deserve, but we do need. Yeah, this game right here is going to be a lot more competitive, man. Um, Granite Hills, they, uh, it's, it's hard to go up against them because um, they stepped up in every big game they've been faced with for this past uh, couple years. Um, I think I'm going to go with the upset here. I'm going to go with Granite Hills. I think they're going to pull off the upset. They're going to keep the game close, and their, their playmakers are going to come through at the right time. That's how you do it, Raymond. You wait until the last game of the bracket discussion show to drop the biggest of the bombs. I mean, I'm just amazed at the fact that we're at a point in the open division where three of these four teams are on undefeated season type vibes and for uh, really multiple years because Lincoln hasn't lost now in a couple of years. Granite hasn't lost in a couple of years. The Carlsbad's only loss is to Lincoln in a championship game. So that's as like that's a loss, but it comes with the defining asterisks as possible. Like, cause it's to the only other team that's worth losing. Like, it's amazing. This is the year where it seems like the open division has actually worked out and coalesced correctly that I have 100%. Like I will be able to say confidently that whoever wins this is the champion. Like the, nobody's going to be able to be like, Oh, one bad call, one fumble. And we got robbed because the best team, like, no, the, any of these four teams, you'd agree. Oh, yes, absolutely. We They got it right. <laughs> teams in the county. There you go, man. Let's go. Four best teams, six best brackets. It's going to be a great year of high school football playoffs. Make sure you follow Raymond, San Diego Football Network, on all the social media so you can follow everything that he's doing. The guy continuously, week in and week out, has better video than anybody else, and that's what we're here for. We're here for the big touchdowns. We're here for people being in the right place, on the right field. Raymond, where are you going this Friday? I just there's so many great games. Um, I don't know, man. You could be on the spot here, but uh, uh wherever. Oh, it is. Oh, hey. <laughs> this is if 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 nothing else, it's just a chance to plug once again. Follow San Diego Football Network so you can find out where he's headed this Friday, so you can be tuned into it. And everybody, uh, we will talk to you guys next round.